right, everybody, like, uh, this is amazing. Thank you for joining us on uh, this August 3rd of uh, 2020. We have an amazing event uh, lined up for all of you tonight. Uh, as you may know, uh, some uh, big historic event has taken place Wednesday last week, which is Cardano's uh, major uh, uh, hard fork, which is the Shelly upgrade. I know Jan, our, our, our moderator here, is, is going to unravel that for you um, and uh, what it means. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a big deal. Um, I want to give a big welcome to the Cardano community who've, uh, who have joined us tonight. I want to also welcome the Kishner Waterloo community and the Toronto community as well for joining us today in this uh, panel. Um, just a quick intro. Uh, my name is Edward Bushi, co founder of, uh, and director of uh, Bitcoin Bay. Uh, our main mission is to grow the blockchain ecosystem. And, by, and we do that in very specific ways by helping startups scale through uh, helping them find um, funding, helping them do the development work, and even help them do the marketing. And we connect them with investors who are looking for opportunities in the space as well. And to our main event, uh, joining us today are esteemed guests Heinrich Pfeiffer, John McPherson, and Mel McCann from the Cardano Foundation. And uh, uh, we couldn't be more uh, happy to have them over. Uh, Cardano Foundation is, a, is the nonprofit uh, arm of the Cardano blockchain project. Um, if, uh, for those who are new, the IOHK and, uh, IOHK and Cardano Foundation work in unison to build the Cardano ecosystem around the world. Today, joining us and mod moder moderating our panel is Jan Miranda. Jan Miranda has been a longtime colleague of uh, Bitcoin Bay and me especially. He's an avid photographer, and he also happens to be very technical too. I've worked with him along, alongside him uh, building websites way back before uh, 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 Bitcoin Bay was uh, uh, at its point now. And uh, he's been like with the blockchain community since the very beginning, especially here in Toronto. So I, uh, uh, at that, I'd love to um, leave it to uh, Jan Miranda to take it from here. Okay, yes. Um, so my name is Jan Miranda. Um, I've been in the community for quite a while now. Um, I met Edward way back in, when was it, 2013, um, and uh, watched Bitcoin Bay grow and um, Ethereum. And, uh, and then along came uh, Cardano. And that was, uh, I mean, I've been following this for a long time. Um, I have a computer science background uh, and, and it's just, you know, like the whole cryptocurrency blockchain development is amazing to me. And uh, I mean, it's, it's already been like 10 years. Uh, I mean, it's, it's got, come a long way. Bitcoin to smart contracts with Ethereum and then Cardano is, is, is moving up. It's the third generation basically. Okay, so let's move on here. Um, we have with us the Cardano Foundation uh, representatives, Heinrich, uh, who is the general secretary, uh, John, uh, the exchange uh, relationship manager, and Mel, who's the platform integration engineer. Um, we're gonna go over uh, basically three different sections. Uh, we're gonna go over the, the big map, uh, the, uh, sorry, the big picture, the roadmap, go over uh, the development of Shelley, um, or where we are at Shelley. It went from Byron, Shelley, and then we're gonna move on to smart contracts and scaling and all that. The next thing we're gonna go over is uh, people and teams. Um, Cardano is a very international um, uh, blockchain. Like, uh, anyways, we'll go over that. We're gonna talk about uh, IOHK, the foundation, and Emergo. Um, and then we'll go, the, uh, the third section is going to be technical details. And then we're going to go over staking, um, staking pools and uh, contracts. And, and then we'll take questions from people. So, um, oh, uh, I sorry, guess, we'll... uh, Jan, I just want to say a quick thing for everybody who wants to ask a question. Uh, please be sure to use the chat function at the, uh, on, the, on the Zoom tool and we'll, uh, 
we can address them at the very end. Yeah, actually, right. I'll add that. So after each of the sections, I'm going to ask people to uh, hold their questions, uh, submit your questions, and at the very end, we're going to go over them. So basically, if you have any questions, if you put them on the chat, Edward is going to compile them, and at the very end, we're, we're going to go over them. Okay, um, so let's start with uh, an introduction from Heinrich. Uh, do you want to tell me uh, how you fit into the whole project and uh, your background? Sure. Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Um, first of all, thank you very much for having us here. It's a great pleasure, uh, especially in the situation we are right now. It's, it's probably interesting for you as well. So I'm uh, the General Secretary at the Cardano Foundation and responsible for the whole day-to-day -day operations at the Foundation and also for, for uh, coordinating the global team. I've been working for the Foundation since a bit more than one year now. Uh, it was a very intensive time, already feels uh, like, like several years. Um, before that, um, I worked in the banking industry for almost 14 years in, in different countries, Germany, Switzerland, uh, focused on different markets. And I got into blockchain technology from an academic uh, perspective in 2015, 2016. And um, the interest developed over time a lot. So, and uh, I reached a point uh, approximately two years ago where I said, I'm spending so much time on this topic, on, on the technology itself, on the developments, where I said, okay, I, it's, it's too much time that I'm spending now. I also want to move uh, professionally into that direction. So I looked for an opportunity in the blockchain space. At that time, there were a lot of new projects uh, upcoming, but it was important for me that I really have a project uh, where I say, okay, that's something serious um, from, from the technology, from the team behind it, and where I also see great potential. Um, so I finally found uh, Cardano and, and uh, it was a good match, I would say, for, for both sides, for the foundation and for me as well. And uh, that's how I ended up at the foundation. And I'm very happy here. It was uh, the great or the best decision I could do. And don't regret any day uh, working for the foundation. So it's, it's great to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Henrik. Heinrich, sorry. Uh, John McPherson, um, he's the exchange relationship uh, manager. Um, and maybe you can do an introduction about yourself. We actually met a long time ago and you've been in the space for quite, quite a while. So maybe you can give us a little bit of background of um, you know, your involvement in uh, the blockchain even before Cardano as well. Sure, sure. So, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, I'm the exchange uh, relationship manager for the Cardano Foundation. Uh, they brought me on mid-May, uh, about halfway through May, uh, to sort of handle these negotiations and, and keep people happy. Uh, the exchanges, definitely. Uh, because we knew that Shelly was coming up, it was going to be a big launch, big big milestone for Cardano, so we knew that we had to have top bunch of communication. Uh, and Mel definitely helps with that as well. Uh, so I guess I, I got into Bitcoin back in... 2010, I think, early 2010. Uh, the Toronto scene, I know a bunch of you guys from that scene. Uh, definitely been a blast. Uh, I, I love the Toronto events. I just want to say that. I love the Toronto community. Uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, so, so my background is compliance and, and banking, uh, anti-money laundering, anti-terrorist financing, all that fun stuff. Uh, and I, I learned about Bitcoin. I was actually studying to be a detective uh, for the OPP. And I thought, I want to work in crypto. I found out about it. I thought it was amazing. And I just knew at that point. So I went to work for an exchange, uh, maybe early 2013. And uh, more recently, I was the director of the Pivx Foundation. And uh, I had left Pivx to come over to Cardano. I saw the opportunity. I uh, saw that Cardano is a great project and that the foundation was, was hiring. So I made that switch about May and definitely don't regret that at all. That's been great. Really happy to see the stuff Cardano is doing. Great to have you on board. Thank you. Okay, so uh, next up here we have Mel McCann. He's the platform integration engineer. Um, go ahead. Sure, Mel. Thanks very much. Um, hello from Ireland, and uh, I'm delighted to be here. Um, How's the weather there? <laughs> the weather's always horrible in Ireland. <laughs> um, it's nighttime now, so I don't know really, but 
Um, yeah, my, my background is in, um, um, I did a degree in, and a master's in computer science and um, I worked in development for many years and then I made the change over to integrations, specifically logistics integrations. And then um, in 2017, I had been, I started following the Cardano project and um, I've been a big fan um, of it. And then uh, the opportunity came up for me to join and I was delighted. So um, yeah, I mean, on a daily basis, myself and John work um, hand in hand dealing with the uh, exchanges. I deal with a lot of the technical aspects of it um, related to integrations and taking what um, is built from IOHK and um, helping, helping third parties um, fit that into their systems, um, which can be a tricky proposition at times because a lot of people do things differently, but uh, we make it work and um, yeah, I'm delighted to be here. So thank you. Great for to having. have you. Great to have you. Wow. Yeah, we've got uh, quite a smart panel here uh, with, with uh, a lot of experience in uh, cryptocurrency. Um, okay, so uh, we're going to go on to uh, the themes, um, which would be we're going to start with the big picture and the roadmap. Um, Cardano has been around for a while um, and there's a lot of research behind it. And now, <clears throat> now that all of that research is built up and, and we're implementing it. So let's, let's go over the, the big picture. Um, I'm going to share my screen here. Um, and here we go. Okay. So this is the Cardano roadmap. If you guys, uh, you know, for the public that's listening, you can go to, uh, Cardano, uh, it's roadmap.cardano.org, and you'll be able to see this. So this is the progression. Right now we're at Shelley. Um, I'm not gonna go over this. I'm gonna let the guys at the Cardano Foundation explain this. Um, like where we started, where we're going, where we are right now. Uh, which one of you guys wanna, wanna go over this? Talk about the, um, the roadmap. And um, we, we, we can quickly go through all of them. So starting yeah. with Byron. Yeah, so perfect. Yeah, so, Heinrich, do you want so, to take it? Okay. Yes, sure. <clears throat> I mean, as you can see here, the, the roadmap is divided into different eras. So Byron, uh, that's really the foundation of the Cardano protocol um, with um, shipping or launching the proof of stake protocol. It's called Ouroboros. And the vision at the beginning was really to set, uh, solve the main challenges that um, blockchains at that time uh, were facing. So scalability, interoperability, sustainability, and uh, really building a protocol that uh, solves those challenges. The first version was shipped um, end of 2017. And during the Byron era, also the um, Cardano wallets, Daedalus and Veroy um, were launched. And one key aspect uh, was as well, beside the whole technical development, um, building the Cardano community, right? Which has been quite successful. Uh, if we look back today, uh, the community is a really important part for the Cardano project. You can say it's community-driven project, uh, the whole Cardano blockchain. Then uh, the next era is the Shelly era, that's really the decentralization and um, moving from a federated network that we had in the Byron era to full decentralization. So meaning the nodes will uh, be fully uh, run by the community and um, it will also introduce um, a delegation and incentive schemes for stake pool operators, but also for people who want to delegate their ADA and participate in the staking. Um, we had different stages how the Shelley transition happened, but uh, we're now in a very good position that we can say the hard fork happened during the past few days. And that's a very, very big milestone for us because- Yeah, I want to emphasize that. Uh, can, so the exact time when the hard fork occurred, can you um, just sort of talk about that? Yeah, I would say it was not a fixed state for us internally, right? For the external perception, I mean, we had a fixed date, a fixed time, um, but it started long before uh, this state or the time with the preparations and especially during the last few weeks before the hard fork, uh, there was a lot of work on, on all sides ongoing and 
all different uh, ecosystem partners for IOHK, for the Cardano Foundation. And all teams did a very uh, great job. Um, we really worked together as a team, also cross entities. And uh, I mean, otherwise it, it wouldn't be in, uh, wouldn't be in, uh, happen probably um, we had a lot of support from our community which is fantastic especially from the from the um, early pioneers from our ambassadors um, so i can say the technical development is probably the most important aspect uh, for the hard fork right and, and that was handled uh, by by iohk so they did a great job on this worked very hard and uh, there are also other aspects uh, that need to be considered, right? The whole community topic, the marketing topics, how do you communicate this externally? So the foundation was a lot involved in those topics around the whole technical uh, development. Yeah, I have to compliment you guys. Like the, the entire uh, hard fork, I mean, is involving so many different um, aspects. I mean, you know, like there's the community, there's the, the hardware, there's the wallets. Um, and everything i mean it was it, it went off uh with without any flaws that i can see <laughs> um yeah and that's pretty incredible when you consider all of the technology behind it i mean you guys have been working on the research for several years and you've actually you know bring this to fruition where it's working and it's truly uh you know like decentralized staking and you've got anyone that wants to they can they can be part of the pools um so we'll go on uh sorry to interrupt you there i, I just the, wanted to like no no problem no problem yeah. the the uh gogan era is the smart contract era right um so that really enables users to create and execute smart contracts on the cardano blockchain and um, there we will have different stages first um the, the multi-currency ledger so the the creation of tokens tokenization of, of digital and, and physical assets and then the um, smart contracts or the Gogan Foundation, really, uh, with, with Plutus, uh, the purpose-built uh, smart contract development language. And then afterwards, also with Marlo, uh, which is a domain-specific uh, language for creating financial smart contracts in a very easy way um, for, for people who are not that familiar with how to code a smart contract or how to develop a smart contract. Um, then we have the whole Basho era that is uh, focused on, on scaling uh, what we have right now. So there's also going on a lot in, in, in parallel. And the whole Voltaire area, right, which is uh, definitely the final piece for the Cardano network to become a self-sustaining uh, system uh, that will be maintained in a decentralized way. So um, if, if you think about what is required to really have a decentralized system and uh, to, to maintain it and, and to do software updates, make improvement or, or changes uh, over time in a decentralized way, a very uh, strong and, and good and fair governance uh, system is required for this, right? So there are different parts of it. And uh, one, one example is the Cardano improvement proposal. It's similar to the, the Bitcoin or Ethereum pr uh, improvement proposal where com community members or people who are, um, want to hand in the proposal can do that via our uh, GitHub page and then initiate a certain review process and, and uh, feedback process. Then we also have a treasury system. You also need to think, okay, if you have a decentralized uh, blockchain, uh, how, how, how do you do the funding for the changes? How do you, uh, where do you get the money from, right? Uh, so there's also um, a treasury system that will be implemented where the community or, or users at the end, ADA holders can vote which project will be supported or which change will be supported and get funded and, and what kind of funding they get. And that's and part of Voltaire? That's, that, that's that, all part of it. So there are different components, right? And at the end, they all build uh, Voltaire together, yeah. And the yeah. whole voting, how this will happen, uh, IOHK is the catalyst project at the moment ongoing. Um, so really, how, how can the voting happen and, and which mechanism is, do we have as an underlying voting process and so on. So there are a lot of topics ongoing in that area. And it's quite important to mention because if you see 
that roadmap, we have one, two, three, four, five, right? Uh, people might think, okay, we first start with Byron, then Shelley, then Gogan, then Basho, then Voltaire. But work is ongoing in parallel in all different areas. So this doesn't mean now we have Shelley, now we start with Gogan, afterwards with Basho. So work of all eras is really going on in parallel. And that's uh, quite important and that we have very good progress in, in all areas. So I'm, I'm very exciting. This will, uh, in my opinion, be the most important year for Cardano. Um, yeah. And, and yeah. Uh, it's quite okay. promising. Yeah, it's, there's a lot, of, a lot of new names for people that um, are new to this. Um, so I'm just gonna go over that very quickly, what, what you discussed. So these are the different eras, different steps that Cardano was taking to full implementation. Uh, first, there was Byron, which is the foundation. Shelley, where we are now, where we just got the hard fork, that's decentralization. Um, Gogan, which is where we're, all of these, by the way, um, as, as you explained, all of these are being worked on simultaneously by several teams all over the world. And what's happening is each, one by one, each of these, these um, eras are, are being implemented, first Byron, then Shelley, next is going to be Gogan, then Basho, then Voltaire. And, but all of these projects, emphasize all of these projects are being worked on at the same time right now. Um, yeah, so um, any of you other guys uh, like John, um, Mel, did you want to mention anything about the roadmap and where we are in the hard fork maybe? Uh, sure, yeah, yeah, so I think, uh... I'd like to focus a little bit on Shelley and just what it what it means for decentralization as a whole. Uh, so I think I think Shelley opened this this era of decentralization that allows us to move into this like hybrid, uh, federated and public node architecture that leads into completely decentralized public nodes, and that's that's what we want, right? We want this complete decentralization, and that's what we. But Shelley really sets the groundwork for that. Uh, I think as of this afternoon, we're almost seven hundred pools. Uh, so, so we're growing very, very quickly and, and more and more every single day uh, we become more and more decentralized. Uh, Shelley really represents the, the natural maturation of the network uh, and, and not only make it more useful, more rewarding and more valuable for everybody else, uh, but it really sets the stage for the stuff down the road uh, with Gogan, Basho, Voltaire and stuff like that. So I think, I think Shelley is really important. It, it was really the, the groundwork for the future stuff to come up. Yeah, and I want to ask you uh, one question, Heinrich. Um, Specifically, um, this blockchain, Cardano, as opposed to many, many other ones, it's based on research. So it's peer reviewed research. And I just want to emphasize that, like if you go on the website, um, how many white papers are there? Like there's, there's a lot of research going on, a lot of white papers behind all of this stuff. Yeah, the whole, the whole um, protocol is based on scientific research and academic peer review. And if you look at the IOHK uh, website, I think you can, can find more than 70 papers uh, in, in the research area. So there's quite a lot of uh, research going on, um, which is impressive and um, also a good quality standard, right, um, for, for the whole protocol. Yeah, like, uh, can you guys see this? 79 papers, right? 79 yeah. papers. Yeah, 79 amazing. papers. Yeah. I mean, this is, yeah. this is incredible, uh, peer reviewed, right? And also, I, I think um, I'd be doing a disservice if I, I wasn't showing some of the people here that are behind it. I mean, this is incredible, right? Like, these are like seasoned professors that have been doing, you know, cryptography um, and, and this kind of thing for, you know, like their careers, right? So yes, impress, impressive team with the great experiences in the area, also with great universities, right? So that's um, really impressive to see. Are, are there any particular people in here, Heinrich, that maybe you might want to um, highlight? That that you I, think? I, I, I would say all of them are, are doing a great them, job, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you look at the seventy-nine papers, that's a good good team result at the end. 
Yeah, so actually uh, to the audience here, if you guys want to look up these researchers, if you go to IOHK um, and then you look under research, you can see all of the people that are behind this. A lot of people with like really good credentials. Um, and Heinrich, maybe you can um, talk about um, Pascal. Uh, the, uh, the guy that wrote Pascal, he's even behind this, is that correct? Yes, I would hand this uh, question to Mel if that's okay. Oh, okay. Sorry, we're a little off topic here. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back here. Um, people and teams. I assume you were talking about Kevin Hammond, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I just thought I'd I'd add that in here because I mean, like, um, behind all of this stuff, right? Behind the roadmap, all of these professors and 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 the the research behind it is is what's building this up and and what makes it so valuable. So I just want to emphasize that. Um, so I think that leads us on to um, the next section. Um, but before I go on, I'm going to say anyone in the audience, um, any, anyone that's um, on here, uh, leave us some questions about the, uh, the big picture, the roadmap. If you have any questions, we're going to address these at the end. Um, I just wanted to mention that before we go on to the people and teams. OK, so the next section I'm going to go over here is uh, people and teams, the people behind Cardano, um, who is IOH, or what are the entities IOHK, and what does that mean? <laughs> People are probably wondering. Uh, the Cardano Foundation and Emergo. Um, so uh, one of you guys, you, you want to address the question? Yes, so we are a very international team, right, Be behind Cardano, and we call it the Cardano ecosystem. Uh, which consists of IOHK, um, who is um, doing the whole development, responsible for the development of the blockchain protocol, and is led by Charles Hoskinson. Then we have Emergo. Emergo is responsible for fostering commercial applications that are being built up on the Cardano um, ecosystem. And then <clears throat> we have the Cardano Foundation. We are a Swiss-based non-profit organization and we're focused on driving adoption in all kind of kind of areas, uh, supporting the development of use cases. Um, we're focusing on the global Cardano community. Um, the, as I said at the beginning, right, the Cardano uh, project is a community-based project. So um, we really need to ensure that uh, the community also has everything they need to work on Cardano and they, they want to know um, that they are educated and uh, it's also important that we have a fair behavior within our community channels and within the community itself, right? We are also focusing on, on shaping legislation and commercial standards, uh, ensuring stakeholder accountability and, and facilitating a lot of partnerships. Um, as you can see here right now, the foundation is uh, led, or the, the, the uh, highest body of the foundation is the Foundation Council. We have uh, Nathan Kaiser as the chairperson, then uh, Manmeet Singh, and Domino Borki, who is also the treasurer of the foundation, Tamara Hasen, and uh, Nicholas Arquers as the council. Yeah, that's quite and a we team. Have, yeah, so that's... We are, we're, we're divided into PR and communications team. Um, then we newly built uh, the whole marketing team. So a lot of people are missing on this page. It's, it's not up to date <laughs> yet. Um, and we have obviously the, the community team and the whole operations team. Um, I think we grew from beginning of last year, we were around, yeah, we were less than 10 people and now we are uh, 29 people. <laughs> That's incredible. Uh, wow. From 15 countries, um, a few more people that uh, will support us are already in, in the pipeline of being onboarded. And it's important for us that we have the right skills in the foundation, right? So um, the foundation will take over more and more responsibilities in, in different areas for the whole Cardano uh, project. So we need to ensure that we have the right skills there. Um, we definitely need to build up the whole technical skills in the foundation. That's what we're currently working on. So we will build uh, the whole tech team. 
um, that we can also provide on support on the technical level, especially to the community and to people who really want to build on Cardano. So that's the Cardano Foundation, and that's all three of you guys are 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 part of that um, team, basically, right? Yes, exactly. Yes. And then, I mean, the the whole ecosystem, as I said, it's the IOHK, it's the Mergo, it's the foundation, and um, we always say the community is the uh, wider part of our team, right? Because they are so supportive, so engaged, and um, we really have a good interaction with the community, and uh, it's it's great to have the community. They are definitely part of our team as well. Yeah, and uh, let me see the Mergo. Mergo, one second. And Mergo, I don't know as much about a Mergo. Um, they're a, an entity onto themselves. Um, can you tell us how they kind of fit into the ecosystem? A Mergo? Look, they are also, um, if you can call it, a founding partner of the, the project when we look at the uh, entities behind uh, Cardano. And uh, so far, they have done a lot on the educational side, um, providing general education from the blockchain area and on, on Cardano specific education. I think that's a pretty good overview. So basically, we have three entities. IOHK, which actually stands for Input Output Hong Kong. And they've moved actually, the, the headquarters. Can one of you guys um, go over that a little bit? They moved to the States. And look about the, the uh, detailed setup of IOHK. I think it's better to discuss with them how, how they are okay. structured and, and organized. Okay. What I can say is that we are from, from, from a entity perspective, right? We're separated entities, also uh, separated legal entities. Um, but we we are partners, right? So we strongly collaborate uh, across the entities, have daily interactions with the team members and, and work together. It's a great collaboration. Uh, but that's also required, right? Otherwise, it wouldn't make sense if each entity would work in silos. So that's uh, really great to see that we have such a great collaboration with, with IOHK and with the Yeah, and, and uh, the Cardano Foundation is it's a nonprofit, is that correct? It's a non-profit organization based in, in Switzerland. Yeah. So that, what does that do? That, does that allow you to um, have di different interactions with governments, like the mandate for the Cardano Foundation? Um, <clears throat> as I said, look, we're, we're focusing on driving the adoption, so supporting use cases and that, that uh, the Cardano blockchain really will be uh, applied in, in real life then uh, focusing on the community, also shaping legislation, commercial standards, being in interaction, having discussions, uh, being member of working groups with bodies who really focus on legislation and, and commercial standards. Um, so reg having regular exchange with them, that's also related to, to governance, uh, governments and uh, strong focus has been and will be even uh, stronger in, in the coming months is uh, facilitating partnerships, right? So in all, in all areas with different uh, industries, different enterprises, um, that's a very big focus for us. Yeah, I think uh, Charles Hoskinson's vision of um, dividing the entities into IOHK, the foundation and Emergo really allows you to focus and, and um, put your energies into you know, getting Cardano out into the world. Um, are there any partnerships that you would want to mention or is that something that um, we can leave to the next uh, panel discussion? Uh, there are a lot of discussions ongoing on our side, uh, on the partnership side. Uh, yeah. Nothing uh, to be disclosed yet, but happy to come back at a later stage uh, when, when we are a bit more progress with announcements. Yeah, okay. Um, so if uh, people that are on Zoom um, have any questions about what we've gone over here, about the people in the teams, IOHK, the foundation, Emergo, maybe you can just post them and we'll address them at the end of this uh, panel discussion. Uh, we're going to move on to technical details. So uh, one of the big things about uh, the hard fork is the staking pools and staking. Um, this is a uh, real time, it's not a test net, it's on the main net. 
And uh, so maybe, uh, I don't know, Heinrich, Mel, John, do uh, you guys want to talk a little bit about um, where we are with uh, staking and what is proof of stake? Yeah, sure thing. So um, at the moment, um, like John said, we have 700, I think, those registered. Um, the, what staking is, is, is um, your representation of your value in the, in the ecosystem. So um, if you want to delegate that to um, a pool operator so they can um, produce blocks on your behalf, um, that's very easy to do, to do using Daedalus. Um, so, I mean, for people to get involved in, in um, staking delegation, stake delegation at the moment, um, it's really easy. You just download the latest version of Daedalus and then you can participate. Um, if you want to get involved in a more technical um, part and become a pool operator, um, there's documentation um, there and there'll be a video series coming out uh, next week, uh, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, Heinrich. Um, that uh, will help people to set up a staking pool. Uh, let me see if I can find that. Um, I think IOHK has a staking calculator. Uh, let me see here. Um, oh shoot, let's see if I can find it. Okay, uh, we'll skip that for now. Um, Okay, can you talk a little bit about the staking pools? Um, I, I know a lot of people um, want to get involved and anyone can actually apply. Um, what would be the process for that? Um, well, the thing is, is that like, I mean, you just register a transaction on the network. I mean, it's, it's open to everyone and that's the beauty of the whole thing. So if you go on and learn how the tools work, um, anybody can get involved, anybody can register. So it's, it's, not, it's not like uh, an exclusive club or anything that um, only certain people can, can create a pool. Um, you don't need expensive hardware, um, so it's pretty open. Yeah, I think that's one of the differences between uh, proof of work, right? Like people running um, you know, Bitcoin mining machines, yeah. if they want to do a pool for proof of stake, they don't need that heavy hardware, right? No, uh, you don't. And it's pretty easy for people to get involved. Like for proof of work, uh, for certain uh, networks, it's, it's almost impossible to participate. Um, and that's, that's just the nature of, um, you know, the difference between the two is that um, Joe Soap can come along and set up a pool easily. Um, you can delegate stake. You can always participate. Um, so that's why it, I think it's, it's, it's really good system because it's fully inclusive, you know? Yeah. And there are a lot of tools, um, Heinrich was saying earlier, um, there are a bunch of tools, people are, it, it's all open. So you have people that are building uh, dashboards for the, the staking pools and the, and the blockchain explorer, explorer for Cardano. Um, yeah, it's, it's really amazing to see what kind of tools the community are, is developing, right? It's, it's so helpful providing so many insights and uh, it's really great to see how many we have. Uh, yeah, like I, I don't want to pick just one, but uh, you know, like uh, I, I'm just going to quickly randomly pick pick one of them. Here's one. I, I, I mean, it, it like it lays out, you know, like the slots, the stake, the pools. It shows all of the t decentralized nodes and pools working. Um, th there's one. Here's another one. Um, I mean, it's incredible because it's all open source. Anyone can like develop this stuff, right? Um, yes, <clears throat> exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, we are also currently working on, on um, some educational material for people who are not that familiar with blockchain technology, but hold, hold ADA, for example, how they can uh, participate to the staking to expand it in a very easy language that uh, everybody can understand it. And also we're working on educational uh, tutorials, how to set up stake pools if you 
have not participated in the in the previous test nates or are not aware what is required and, and how does the whole process work right so we are focusing quite a lot on this to also bring new people uh, into the community and make the access uh, to the community or to the to the technology as easy as possible for for people coming new into the space um so the other thing is dataless that is the cardano wallet right there's more than one wallet there's um uh what's it uh, Uroi, and there's dataless that's correct right uh do you one of you guys want to just address uh the difference and maybe just talk about the wallet itself or is this sure. uh yeah so okay. Um, Uroi is built by Emergo and um, it's a mobile app and a Chrome extension. So whereas Daedalus itself is just a um, native application. Um, and that's primarily the difference of the two. Um, functionally, you know, they do exactly the same thing as most wallets. And, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Um, let me see. What questions do we have here? Um, do you guys want to address, let me see. So we went over how people can uh, participate. So if they want to be part of staking pools, they, they want to do uh, build a, a staking pool um, server, how would they go about doing that? Who would they contact? What was the best way for them to like look into this? Sure, the, the best way for them to get started would be to go onto Cardano tutorials on GitHub um, on IOHK and follow the steps. Um, so um, during the ITN, um, the, the testnet pioneers went through all these steps and refined the process um, for setting up a pool. So, okay. Yeah, that would be the best place to start. Yeah. Sorry. You you can also go to the Cardano forum and you will find a lot of uh, articles or tutorials uh, either from from the foundation from IOHK or also from the community members. They uh, they are um, providing a lot of valuable content on that as well. Yeah. So yeah, it's on. It's, uh, I think the forum is on Cardano.org and then you can can uh, go. Oh to the okay. Forum. Right. Uh, let me see if I can find that here. Okay. Um, the forum. Do, 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 do. Okay. We also, I mean, we have a lot of community channels, right? Also on Telegram, yeah. uh, official Telegram. Uh, channels. We have a um, right. very uh, skilled community team and yep. also our ambassadors um, who are happy to provide uh, help, support, information, whatever is required to the community to, to set up a stake pool. And um, there are different channels. Um, best way to start, I think, would be uh, going to the Cardano forum and, and also joining the Telegram channels that we are yeah. maintaining. Yeah, uh, I think the next time that we do um, like a, do a meetup, um, I mean, this that's that's a that's a, a whole discussion onto itself, setting up um, a staking pool. Um, but I think that's definitely something that we're going to want to do in the future. Um, and like you said, I mean, this is very new. The main net just went on and we're doing real time staking now, staking pools. So uh, there's going to be a lot of material coming out that's going to walk people through this stuff, right? And yes, they're um, developing the videos right now, right? Yes, the I videos understand. and tutorials. And I'm just reading through the chat. So if there are any. Uh, any one of you is interested in, in, in doing research. I saw that someone is working on a PhD there. Uh, of, or if someone wants to build on Cardano and needs any advice or support, um, just, just Do you want to us. share your screen? Sorry? Do you want to sh share your screen so we can see that? Or is that... Uh... I'm just reading in the chat of this, uh, this Zoom meeting uh, a few, oh, few topics okay. that have been raised. Yeah, so yeah. whenever there's anything you need or you need any information or would like to discuss projects or, or research topics you're working on, uh, just contact us. We're, we're happy to support you. Yeah, that's great. Um, okay, so we're, we talked about staking pools. Um, next thing I'd like to go over a little bit here is the contracts. Like right, right now, let, let's see, we're, we're right, uh, hold on a second. Yeah, 
Okay, so right now we're at Shelly, and the next one is Gogan, which is smart contracts. And this is ongoing, like they've been working, you guys, the whole team, several teams have been working on, working on smart contracts for Cardano. And there are two projects that are associated with that. One's called Plutus, um, and the other one's called Marlowe. And I was wondering if you guys could just explain what those are and how they fit into the contracts and the ecosystem. Um, maybe Mel or Heinrich, do you, would you want to address that? Plutus and, and what they are? You don't have to go into details, but maybe just an overview of what, what they are. Yes, I, I would say um, we have different audiences, right? So on the one hand, we have the developer audience or the people who really can code or are familiar with coding smart contracts. And for those, probably Plutus would be uh, the best, best environment to build smart contracts. But as I mentioned earlier, we also focus on financial smart contracts. And uh, there we are focusing on the main experts like people who are working in the financial industries are, are creating financial products or people from the banking industry really want to um, develop a smart contract but are not that familiar with uh, how to code it or, or how to develop it. So for them, probably Marlow would be the best environment to start. And we also have the Marlow playground where you can find different templates and um, also run simulations. We also have the Blockly environment. Uh, it's it's uh, very interesting also. So I tried to develop some smart contracts there. It's quite easy uh, to, to uh, learn where you really have a visual environment and can so to say via drag and drop build your own smart contracts. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. I, I don't have it right now. This is the Plutus playground and it allows you to, without doing any like you don't have to download anything you can run yeah. the plutus playground right from here like i'll zoom in a little bit so people can see this I, it's pretty incredible and then you can without having your own server you can run a simulation do transactions yeah and all of there that. are also the whole tutorials and and materials uh, available on these pages and i think it would be more more uh, interesting perhaps to quickly go through uh, the, the Marlow playground. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm looking for it. Uh, I, I had it a little bit earlier, but I, um, how would I look for that? Marlow, or hold on a second, Marlow, is that right? Hold on a second. It's actually And you pretty, go to uh, cardano.org. Yeah. Which one is it under research? Or no, it's it cardano.org. Uh, oh, that's the IOHK page. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Okay. Um, and it is under, which one is it under? Do developers. Oh, test nets, here we go. There oh, there we go. You can see at the top, the Marlow test net, yeah. All yeah, there, there we go, there we go. And uh, visit the playground. Yeah, and, and I mean, this is incredible, the way this works. You don't have to know any coding in order to actually use it. Um, let me see. It's here. the Blockly, Blockly environment. Blockly. Where you there can, we go. Exactly. Yeah, you can just drag and, drop. drag and drop. Yeah. Yeah, so you have a contract, you drag in, uh, let's see, parties. Oh, I haven't used this. It, it's changed since the last time I used it, but it's pretty cool. Like basically, you just drag and drop and it'll generate the code for you. And um, so who is this targeted for? Maybe maybe you can just sort of go, explain what the purpose this of one, this is. This one is more targeted to people uh, that are not that experienced uh, in, in development or, or coding smart contracts. Um, it's more for people from, from a different uh, area, like the financial area, the banking area who really want yeah. to uh, use smart contracts in, in daily life, want to have an easy way of creating smart contracts uh, without uh, doing the whole coding, right? And that's yeah. really a very easy way. We have very good tutorials um, on, on YouTube. Um, so if you're interested in this, um, it's very easy to learn. Yeah. And it basically like plug and play, you, you basically just, graphically add in components 
into Blockly and, uh, and it generates the code for you. Is that uh, correct? Yes. 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 And the purpose for this, uh, my understanding is that it, it helps prevent uh, errors and um, like, uh, you know, problems that other blockchains have had in the past where um, they wrote the code to do a certain thing and it, and it didn't do exactly what it was expected to do. And the way this is written here, the way you can just drag and drop, it makes it very difficult to, to create a contract that doesn't do exactly what you want it to do. So very powerful, very powerful. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I encourage people to go and check this out. Um, you can also, if you go to the Haskell editor, there are, you are already done. If you, if you yeah. go to the Haskell editor, you can also find some templates, for example, the escrow contract, and then have the wow. code in front of you, send it to the Blockly, and then have the uh, <laughs> visual drag and drop uh, contract, right? Wow. You can make changes. Yeah. Well, um, this really blows me away. I mean, I was looking at this about a little more than six months ago, and it was completely different. This has really come a long way. Wow. This is it will definitely reduce the entry barrier for people in the yeah. financial world uh, that want to use financial smart contracts. Yeah, so there are people um, already in the um, financial industry that are kind of familiar with this kind of, like this is built for them, right? Um, financial, uh, what are they called? Financial engineers or... or like this it's is for whole, I mean, it's it's just for for anyone who wants to use the financial smart contracts, being in the financial uh, financial industry or outside. Also, private people can use it in a very easy way. Um, yeah. So, it's it's just I think it's more focused on the easy way to create smart contracts without having deep knowledge about coding or Haskell. Um, yeah. That's that's. Uh, and it looks like you have and some I, templates here. You've got yes, an escrow click, template. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Can you so click it's on all it? Set up here. Uh, escrow. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you want me to go to block blocky or? There should be a, a button sent to blockly, right? Can you see it somewhere? Oh, compile or uh, is that at the bottom? I'm not familiar with this um, this interface. It's changed so much since the last okay. time I used it. Okay. But you can convert the code into the um, Blockly environment that you can really then uh, make the changes in the okay. drag and wow. drop with the drag and drop modules. Yeah, well, this is really cool. I think we'll have to have a, a complete separate like um, uh, discussion, um, bring in some technical people to go over this um, at a, at a later date. But this is this is incredible. I really like this. Um, yeah, so if you guys want, anyone wants to check out the development tools, I mean, it's all here. Um, you've revamped the website as well, right? Like, it looks like there's a lot more stuff here that wasn't there, like, just a month or two ago. Sorry, if you if you go back and click on compile, you can send it to Blockly. I think that's uh, interesting to see for the, for the participants. Oh, compile, right. Oh, I see. Yeah, and then you should see a button sent to ah. Blockly at the top. And if you click on that, nice. you can see. Nice, wow see translated okay. in the Blockly environment. Um, I clicked on it. No. And now Do go I, to Blockly. Block? Yeah. No, oh, it's not to... working. Oh, well, yeah. I probably, yeah, I'm not so familiar with this. We're definitely going to go over this some sometime later. Um, I didn't even realize how much has changed here. Um, okay, let's let's move on. So uh, we've gone over Plutus. Uh, hold on a second here. So the test nets. So you have Cardano. There's Plutus and Marlow. Um, and uh, okay, so and that's using Haskell. Um, and th is that that's the programming language that the smart contracts are written in? And that's correct, right? Mm -hmm. Haskell, it all compiles to Haskell, is that right? It's a subset of Haskell, Marlowe and, and Plutus. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other things that you guys wanna add about um, development tools that um, people can look for? Um, maybe some uh, 
coders in the blockchain space if they want to play around with um, Cardano and, and prepare for um, the next era of smart contracts and that. Any other things that you guys would want to add? John, Heinrich, Mel? Yeah, I mean, everything is up on GitHub. Everything's open source. Um, if they want to check out, um, if they want to see what's happening on the blockchain, they can set up a GraphQL server. They can set up um, with our REST APIs. Um, and, and this is what a lot of the third parties have as well um, in the Adrestia project. So um, there's a lot of tools out there and it depends on people's interest and what they actually want to um, how they want to interact with the Cardano blockchain. So um, I just have a, have an, a look around um, GitHub and see what takes their fancy, whether it's staking information or, um, you know, getting data from the blockchain, like from the, that's actually GraphQL pulling that data there. Oh yeah? Yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah, 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 that's right. So, incredible, incredible. I, you can um, see if you want to grab the queries as well, if you right click on the page and click inspect, you can see the GraphQL requests. Sorry, in, under? Just right click on the page, anywhere. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, and inspect. Oh, inspect. Yeah. Oh, okay. And um, you'll be able to see, I think there's a networking I can't see there. Um, you should be able to see the, uh, the requests going in if you click on network. Click on, sorry. Network on the right hand panel. Over here? Yeah. Oh, oh okay. I see what you're saying. Under sources, network. So, oh, yeah. okay. And you can see all I the see what you're saying. queries if you want to get that sort of data from okay. blockchain. Well, we're really digging in here. <laughs> yeah. So, there are some people want to go down that road. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm a little lost here, um, but I, I kind of see where you're going. Okay, yeah, this interface is, is pretty cool. So uh, just to add to that, like, I mean, this interface is open source. So you have a lot of people that are developing this. Um, this is what IOHK developed, but there are lots of other people like these pools and stuff that are, that are interfacing with it and creating these incredible um, graphics and, and um, it's very cool. Um, yeah. So, okay. Um, do we have any questions, technical questions, um, Edward? Okay. Hold on a second. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, guys, it's uh, seven oh five now. Like, yeah. Do we have any more things you wanted to uh, cover on the chat? Because we we compiled a lot of questions already from. Uh, the yeah. Okay. Uh, let's let's just go over. So the big picture, the roadmap. Let, let's just look at this because this is very important. Um, Byron, Shelley, Gogan, Besho, Voltaire, right? So that's. That's the foundation, decentralization. That's where we are right now. The hard fork just happened last week. Um, all of these uh, different sections are being worked on simultaneously by several teams around the world. The next step is gonna be smart contracts, then scaling, then governance. The next thing we went over was uh, the people and the teams, IOHK, uh, the Cardano Foundation, which our three speakers here are from uh, Emergo, um, and then we went over some of the technical details, staking, stake, staking pools, and uh, contracts. So if um, technically minded coders want to look into that a little bit more, um, we will recommend that you go here on this page, testnets.cardano.org, and take uh, check out Plutus, Marlowe, and um, and other technical details. So there we go. The big picture, the teams, technical details. And I think we'll take some questions now. Okay. Edward? Yeah. Uh, so guys, we have some 11 questions from the, the, the crowd. Uh, if anybody wants to uh, ask a question verbally, uh, please raise your hand up on the, uh, on the Zoom tool and uh, we'll, we'll help unmute you. So question number one, how do you implement tokens with unique names? Something like domain names. 
so that if I create tokens with specific names, nobody can create another one uh, just like it. Uh, this is a question from Chris, and I think it's uh, something to do with uh, smart contracts, no? Yeah, I, I think that would be something on the smart contract platform that we, we don't have yet. Uh, I, I don't know too, too much about that in specific. I'm not sure if Mel knows any more than I do. Um, I don't know if you can have unique names. I'm not entirely sure about that. I know that they they are looking into um, native assets on the Cardano blockchain. Um, whether they'll be the names will be entirely unique, I, I couldn't tell you. Gotcha. All right. It sounds like uh, there, there, uh, there will be a, there will be an underlying methodology how to create uh, the smart contracts, right? And uh, that's currently uh, being developed. Yeah. It sounds okay. like uh, like um, a Cardano can be primed to take on like uh, tokens within uh, within its uh, ecosystem in the future. So we got a question from Xerxes. Uh, IOHK and Emergo have their own products, like their own version of a wallet and Explorer. Are there any plans in the future for Cardano Foundation to develop a, a wallet, software, or Cardano-based apps or DApps as it is part of their scope? Look, we're, we're supporting the adoption of Cardano, right? And we're more focused on supporting the community to build on Cardano and to develop their own apps and dApps and wallets. That's what we are focused on right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a, a community-based uh, way of uh, getting at it. Uh, yes, uh, either community or, or real-life adoption cases, right? So we're supporting them and, and um, providing any support they need to really... Uh, implement their projects rather than uh, developing our own wallets. Gotcha. Yeah, it might be, uh, you might um, be surprised at what uh, like can come out of that. Um, so simple question. I, uh, I'm not sure if you guys can answer. What's a timeline to get Voltaire out? Uh, this is a question from Louis. Uh, he seems uh, most uh, interested in this one. Um, as I mentioned, it, it consists of different components, right? The Cardano um, improvement proposal is already uh, accessible on, on GitHub. Um, you can also already have a look there. It's under the uh, Cardano Foundation GitHub. And uh, also with the voting, I mean, this is currently being uh, tested already. So it's more an experimental approach uh, that is uh, being run by IOHK. And if you want to have more details on how this is working and, and uh, what's, what's the idea behind it and how this will be done, there was a product update from IOHK that was published end of last week, I think, uh, where Dor Gorbisch uh, um, provides a lot of information and updates on Voltaire. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, we have some like uh, uh, follow-up questions, um, like use cases. We didn't really uh, chat uh, uh, too much on that one. Besides financial like um, applications, do you think uh, there's other use cases being developed and you could speak to, for example, uh, food security? This is another question from uh, Louis. It's not only food security, right? It's the whole supply chain area that is where we, we see enormous potential for applying blockchain technology. Also the whole identity uh, area or DeFi area, um, there's a lot of uh, potential in all those areas. Gotcha. Um, uh, a bit of a, um, a, a, an interesting question here from United States of Cardano, uh, a day, a day from that uh, community group. Is the Cardano Foundation working with IOHK on the Atala Enterprise Suite, specifically Prism? Uh, we'd love to hear more about like adoption strategies. Uh, strategies. Um, so the so the Atala and Prism projects are from from IOHK, uh, not not from the Cardano Foundation. And um, you should make a session with uh, IOHK to go into those topics a bit more in detail. Gotcha. Yeah, it's, uh, it's probably too many details uh, for this. Yeah, look, we've we've um, we've so many topics ongoing, right? On the IOHK side, on the foundation side, on the Emergo side, um, some of them are are on the forum, some of them are on Twitter, some of them not. Um, but there's so much to do that uh, we clearly have a 
each each entity, so to say, has a clear focus in, in what they are doing right now. And what uh, and um, there, there's a question from Xerxes at the very end. It seems that there is a movement that wants to really join the uh, the, the staking pools all around the world, but more there's like uh, not no clear uh, resources to find them. It's all like uh, documentation, for example. And it, some people just want to like uh, uh, catch up with the wave. Is there uh, a, a roadmap for more easy use uh, documentation to follow to be part of this uh, staking pool community? Um, are there any influencers that we should also like uh, follow so that we can like learn from them as well that you may know of? Yeah. I, I would recommend to go to the Cardano forum um, there um, the foundation also our community published uh, respective resources to join the telegram channel uh, channel there are also a lot of discussions and and around this topics ongoing and we will also come up with a uh, tutorial uh, very soon how to set up stake pools for for community members so that's all all in the making so to say very cool yeah, you guys got your hands full. There's so much. There's so much stuff going on all over the place. Um, so, just to get back to you guys. Um, if people want to get a hold of you, um, can I get each of you to to like explain uh, the the easiest way to uh, address questions that they have after this? Um, maybe uh, John. Um, what's the best way to get a hold of you if people have questions for you? Sure, absolutely. Uh, so you can email me, uh, john.mcpherson at cardanofoundation.org. Uh, that's, that's what I check every day. You're going to get me the best there. Telegram as well. I just want to check my yeah. Telegram handle. I believe it's at cfjohn. You need to get a hold of me on there. And then Twitter. Uh, Twitter is also where you can get a hold of me. I'm just opening up my page here so I can give you a proper tag. Twitter. Oh, uh, John underscore CF, J O H N underscore CF on Twitter. Uh, so you can reach out to me there as well. You can also find me on LinkedIn uh, pretty much everywhere. Heinrich? Um, I would say best way to reach me is just send me an email. It's uh, my first name dot last name at cardanofoundation.org. Um, that's the easiest way to reach me. But happy, I mean, as I said, if you have any questions, would like to discuss potential projects uh, or, or have educational or research topics or ongoing, uh, very interested in having a discussion and uh, to see if there's a need for support and, and how the foundation can support you. And Mel. Exactly the same, first name, that last name. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, I guess we'll post up, uh, We'll post up information about you guys and um, some links to uh, development um, sources and stuff like that. Um, we'll put it on the meetup group. Um, and uh, I guess we can put a link on the YouTube as well. This is going to be on YouTube. So we might put those links up in there as well. Um, wow. It was great having you guys and uh, the hard fork went off like without a hitch. Um, from my end anyways. <laughs> you, it sounds like there were a lot of sleepless nights uh, before the launch. Um, maybe we can uh, like hear about, like if you guys have any short stories to tell about the actual launch um, and, uh, and, and uh, if, you know, if you have any stories about you know, what you guys have been doing over the last uh, couple of weeks or whatever before we go. Uh, Heinrich? What do you think? <laughs> well, How much sleep have you during... gotten over the last few days? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, there, there's a lot of work ongoing still uh, after the, the uh, hard fork, right? Especially on, on our side as well. Um, to, I mean, a lot of community topics, marketing topics on our side, all topics need to be coordinated and aligned also with RUHK and Nurgle. So um, there's, there's quite a lot ongoing and not much sleep, but uh, it's, it's uh, great work. So we can see the progress and we can also see that it's in our hand what we make out of it now, right? So I think the whole team is very motivated, although the nights are very short, um, mm -hmm. but uh, um, we're, we're absolutely committed to the whole project. So it's, it's an, a very good 
time we enjoy it, although we have a lot of work. So, Mel. <laughs> I just, well, I'm just delighted to be here and say thanks very much for having me. Um, this is the first one of these that I've ever done. I haven't been, uh, you know, involved in the community like John has before. So, uh, yeah, it's really cool. And um, thank you. Yeah, and thank you. Uh, I mean, what time zone are you in? <laughs> um, yeah, it's a little yeah. late for you, and and we really appreciate you uh, coming in for this panel discussion. Yeah, it's thanks all. Seven, and thanks for thanks. thanks for joining us. Edward, do you have any uh, closing words? Uh, yes. Uh, if if you don't mind, I just want to share uh, last slide. Okay, so why why don't you close it off? I, I'm going to say um, this was a great panel discussion, and I thank our guests and hope to do this again very soon and hear about the new developments, the wallets and everything else. I mean, there's so much stuff happening, I think uh, for the development community as well. Um, that's, that's a separate uh, panel discussion on itself. Edward? Yeah, and uh, we're looking forward to like the next wave of, uh, of uh, blockchain uh, um, like uh, applications and new ways for, for people to interact with uh, uh, with Cardano, like a lot of people have been like uh, 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 watching patiently with uh, with Cardano and lo would love to like get started uh, on it. We know it's uh, until phase three, but uh, like uh, we're we're rooting for you guys on this one. And thanks for your time for uh, like sharing your 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 insights with us tonight. Progress is coming very soon, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you guys for Thank you all very your much. hard work. Yeah, Thank you very for, much. Actually, I think we'll end on that.